exactly in, in how strongly they're working. So now you can start to, to use that to understand the, some of the, 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 the properties of empathy. So, so for instance, one of the experiments I'm, I'm describing in chapter four is an experiment that, that we did to try to understand what empathy really is. So you can, you can imagine kind of two flavors to empathy. One form is that empathy really allows you to understand what is happening in the brain of someone else. So that would be almost kind of telepathically gaining access to what is happening in your brain. The alternative is that empathy is projection. So that's more kind of Freudian uh, interpretation. Actually, while I'm seeing you drink that cup of coffee, it's not the case that I really sense what goes on in you. Instead, I sense what would go on in me when I drink, and I can then use that to kind of uh, approximate what might be going on in you. So mind reading versus projection. And so how did we test that? Well, we did a very simple experiment in which we showed people either another human being grasping a cup, or we had an industrial robot kind of calm and grasp a cup. Now, rationally, all of us know that the robots don't really have things like intentions or sensations or emotions. So in a way, rationally, it should make a huge difference for us whether we see a human being take that cup, drink from it, or see a robot take that cup and drink from it. But what we saw was that it, for the brain, it actually doesn't make a difference at all. Whether you see the robot or human grasp that cup, you activate exactly the same motor programs, which are the motor programs that you would use to grasp a cup yourself. And this kind of complete mismatch between what this brain activity then looks like, which is very much like what you see here, and uh, what goes on in the brain of a robot, which looks completely different, this mismatch shows us that what the mirror system does for us is not really sensing what goes on in that other being, in that case a robot, but you project exactly how you would feel while drinking, even onto the robot. So, so, so empathy is really not sensing, but projecting onto other people. But it so happens that, that most of us feel pretty much the same thing when we grasp desperately for a cup of coffee in the morning. So that this projection, most of the time, gives you perfectly correct insights into other people. But it shows us that, for instance, maybe if we watch a dolphin at the dolphinarium, and, 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 and dolphins always have a bit of a smile in their face, then we might decode that as meaning that the dolphin is really happy and cheerful. And in that case, it might be a misunderstanding because humans are different from dolphins. And therefore, this projection that our mirror system kind of predisposes us to do becomes a way to misinterpret what goes on in others. So one thing I was just that's coming to my, uh, mind is here in uh, California, we have Yosemite Valley, which is this beautiful, uh, just spectacular valley. And I, I remember a story of one of the first settlers who came and saw it, and he kind of came over this ridge and then suddenly saw the whole valley. And he, and he just had this beautiful inspiration, and he was like almost in tears, you know, seeing the grandeur of, of that valley. Does that, I was wondering, is that kind of like mirror neurons as well, that you feel, you kind of see the, this grand open valley and the spectacular, and you kind of project your own feelings, your own, you know, you're, you're feeling yourself. If I was this grand valley, what would I feel like? I, I don't know. I'm just wondering if that's... Well, it's, a, it's an interesting interpretation. I, I, I think that um, it, it's, we certainly haven't explored whether you, you, you empathize with a valley in kind of, um, um, but it's, uh, I, I think what, in a way, what, uh, what this kind of chapter in my book is about is to exactly do what I've just done with you, kind of to inspire you to think of things that I have not been smart enough to think about so that you could actually go ahead and design the right experiment to test that. 
because I, I think that science is really a process. And, and I'm writing this book, kind of, I wrote it actually three years ago. So it, it's, in a, I cannot tell you what the future will bring, but I hope that the book is written in a way that you can ask these questions and, and tomorrow we can test them. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, chapter four, Born to Socialize. Correct.